A pool, a movie theater, and more, Buckingham Palace staff have all they need on palace grounds. Here's what life is like for those who serve the royal family. If you get a job as a living employee at Buckingham Palace, you could theoretically never leave. In Buckingham Palace, you can eat and work and stay healthy. Oh, the added experience of seeing people in real life. Almost everything you will ever need is within the palace complex. Details about what facilities are available to staff at Buckingham Palace have leaked out over the years. According to a Channel 5 documentary on the Royal Palaces, Buckingham Palace has a staff post office. However, the sole ATM in the building is owned by the Uber Posh Coots Bank and is for the Royals' use only. There's a pool, a movie theater, and a doctor's office. Hello Magazine reported that there's a chapel and a staff cafeteria. That covers pretty much every major need one could have, from healthcare to entertainment to exercise to religion to food. Although, considering those who live there are in the bustling heart of London, it's probably worth leaving from time to time and enjoying what the city has to offer. While many foreigners think of Buckingham Palace as the most famous location where the royal family lives, there are plenty of other options for them even in just the center of London. It's not required that anyone live at Buckingham Palace, and despite the fact that it's basically its own little town, none of them choose it as their main home. The late Queen Elizabeth II moved permanently to Windsor Castle around 2020, but even before the pandemic and old age made it more logical for her to stay there, she spent as much time as possible at Windsor. King Charles' official residence is Clarence House, and many royals, including Prince William and Kate Middleton, have their London base at Kensington Palace. By the way, you would be careful what you say now, because these guys, they're filming I know! But some royals have staked out their own corner of Buckingham Palace for temporary stays. According to Women and Home, other royals who keep apartments there include Charles' youngest brother, Prince Edward, and his wife, Sophie, his only sister, Princess Anne, and the now-disgraced Prince Andrew. A former Buckingham Palace maid claimed in the British tabloid The Sun that Andrew had 72 teddy bears on his bed at the palace in the 1990s, when he was very much an adult and would get angry if they were out of order. One of the reasons no royal has chosen to make Buckingham Palace their main home is that the place isn't really built to be a home. It's more like an office. That can seem ridiculous considering its size and the gorgeous photos of grand ballrooms and dining rooms. But at its core, Buckingham Palace is the nerve center that keeps the monarchy running, which means it has lots and lots and lots of offices. This means the staff that does live there full time are essentially living in a very fancy version of one of the many office buildings in London. The total list of employees who work in the palace is long, as there are 92 offices in total. Britain the official magazine says that the late Queen Elizabeth considered the palace her office. After all, it was where she lived during the working week and did the day-to-day -day tasks she was constitutionally required to do. For example, her weekly meeting with the Prime Minister always took place at Buckingham Palace. She also met foreign dignitaries and ambassadors there and held most state dinners in the palace. For the late Queen, Buckingham Palace meant work, while Windsor Castle was what she considered her home. It's likely King Charles approaches this in a similar manner. The late Queen Elizabeth was iconic for many reasons, but one of the things associated with her was her dogs. Some of the Queen's corgis, which she had been raising and breeding since she was a child, became celebrities in their own right. The Queen adored her dogs, and she usually had a small herd of them at any time. While they were undoubtedly adorable, if you lived at Buckingham Palace during her reign, you would find that the corgis were really in charge of the place, and the issues they caused might lead to the enjoyment wearing thin. The book Not in Front of the Corgis explains that, at the time, the dogs were allowed access to any part of the palace, but staff themselves can not have dogs live with them or bring their pooches to work. This was a change of policy in 2018 after hundreds of years of dogs being palace approved, according to the Express. 007 escorting the Queen to the Olympics this summer. But it was her corgis that stole the show. While Buckingham Palace projects an era being a pristine example of royal architecture, in reality, it's coming apart at the seams. Buckingham Palace isn't even that old by British history standards, with the oldest sections originally built in the early 1700s. But it's been in constant use since then, and the fact that royals and staff live there means it's hard to do important maintenance. In 2018, according to Insider, the palace began a major $483 million renovation that will take a full decade. Currently, butlers and other staff have to make long treks and climb lots of stairs, since most of the really old elevators don't work. Part of the renovation involves replacing all of them. Old cables, pipes, and wiring that have been in the walls for six decades are getting replaced as well. There's also mice, asbestos, and falling masonry, according to the Daily Beast. As Buckingham Palace serves multiple purposes, the place is always full of people. According to the royal family's official website, the palace has 188 staff bedrooms as well as 52 for royals and important guests. Then there are the 92 offices, which can be filled with hundreds of employees at any time, not just normal weekday work hours. Over the summer, tourists can pay to wander around the staterooms of Buckingham Palace, which they do in droves. Even if you assume that staff will never have to see the visitors who come in off the streets, even the specially invited guests number over 50,000 per year. They are invited to official events, casual lunches with the monarch, and more. Insider puts the total number of guests much higher at 100,000, and the number of tourists at 15 million. 
While live-in staff at Buckingham Palace have job titles and specific tasks to perform, part of working there involves needing to be flexible about what tasks fall under your purview. According to people who have lived and worked there, every single day on the job is different, and you will be asked to do things that have nothing to do with your job title. One former employee told Silver Swan Recruitment, It's a really multifaceted job. One day you could be looking after military uniforms, and the next day you could be wearing pink tights walking alongside the monarch's golden carriage. When hiring a housekeeper in 2016, the royal household was clear to state that, quote, this is no standard housekeeping role, according to Forbes. At the time, the palace was also looking for some footmen, butlers, and someone to take care of all the antique bases. For those who live in, housing and food are technically free, although since the royals are notoriously stingy with salaries, those perks are very necessary to make taking the job worth it. While no royals make Buckingham Palace their main home, they still spend a lot of time at the place. Everyone from the king to minor royals can pop in and out as they please. This means that staff, especially the ones who live there, can have regular, unexpected encounters with royalty. They can end up seeing so much of the royal family that they get to know them quite well, far more than a regular person could ever dream of if they worked literally anywhere else. It's being part of a team where everyone matters and everyone contributes. One former royal footman who worked there during Queen Elizabeth's reign told Silver Swan Recruitment he was constantly amazed, quote, how up close and personal you really are with the royal family. He went on, Within my first day I had already met the Queen, and to think that I was at home one day and the next I'm living in Buckingham Palace face to face with the Queen, it blew my mind. Another former employee told the agency, Occasionally I spoke with the Queen. She is a completely open book, just as you see her. She is very kind and realizes everyone is nervous when meeting her, so always does her best to make you feel at ease. However, yet another former butler told the Kyle and Jackie O radio show in Australia that there is a rule staff cannot speak to the monarch unless spoken to first. While Buckingham Palace has many things, one thing it does not have is a staff bar. That is, the palace doesn't have one anymore. It used to have a bar, and it was very popular with the staff. Too popular. So popular, it was shut down on the order of the late Queen Elizabeth because her staff was getting too tipsy. Silver Swan Recruitment had an inside source who told them the reason was some staff started drinking in the morning. Not a great idea, especially since one former employee says serving the monarch was, quote, run on a military system. In a documentary on the royal palaces for Channel 5, the late Queen's former press secretary, Dickie Arbiter, said they got rid of the bar because servants were showing up to work, quote, worse for wear. Fortunately, there are plenty of pubs and bars within minutes of Buckingham Palace, so the live-in staff don't have to miss out completely, just as long as they show up to work sober, which, to be fair, is not exactly an extreme request. The favorite staff meal at Buckingham Palace, according to former royal chef Darren McGrady, was the weekly Friday fish and chips. He told The Independent, All the staff, 300 staff at Buckingham Palace, all of the chefs would have fish and chips for lunch. Hip hip! While live-in staff have access to good food at Buckingham Palace through the free staff cafeteria, the meals the royals eat when they stay there are on another level. McGrady told Hello Magazine that each day the monarch is given a red leather-bound book full of recipes and menu options, all written in French. Speaking about the late Queen Elizabeth, McGrady says, We prepared the menus three days ahead so we could get the food in. The chefs would pick the menus, and she would put a line through the ones she didn't want. And if she ended up eating something she didn't like, McGrady said, she had a little book on her desk and she would just put a note in there saying, I don't want this again, or something like that. And while the late queen also liked having bowls of nuts left around Buckingham Palace to snack on, it was learned during a major phone hacking trial that she did not want staff helping themselves, or at least not the police. A journalist acquired an internal palace memo where the police working as royal security were told to, quote, keep their sticky fingers out of the monarch's bowl of nuts. Buckingham Palace, like the monarchy, is more about what it represents than what it is. The building is the physical embodiment of the country's past, present, future, the existence of the United Kingdom, or at least England, forever unchanging. That means no one, not even the monarch, can come in and make huge cosmetic changes to the building. Imagine if King Charles III decided he wanted to paint the palace bright pink. According to the BBC, those grand rooms you see in pictures when the king hosts a royal event haven't been redecorated since 1949. That's when the king's grandfather was still on the throne, and the only reason it needed work then was because the palace was bombed during World War II. As historian Ellen Leslie told the broadcaster, most people decorate their houses every 10 years or so, but this isn't what the royal family are into when it comes to Buckingham Palace. They want it to keep looking the same. Occasionally, there will be big changes, but ones that leave the design mostly the same. Queen Victoria died after spending 40 years mourning her husband, Prince Albert, and making sure nothing connected with his memory was altered in any way. It's said that her son, the fashionable Edward VII, walked into Buckingham Palace and demanded his sisters, quote, get this morgue cleaned up. What he definitely did was start modernizing the place, adding better plumbing, telephones, and garages for his new cars. 